We have talked a lot about hydration during our uh, wellness course here, so let's talk about it in the context of the cardiovascular system. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And hydration, what do I mean by hydration? Drinking enough water, okay? So let's look at what happens if we don't drink enough water in the cardiovascular system and how, you know, and, and, and then look, let's look at the good parts. What are the benefits? Cost analysis, right? I mean, what does it take to drink water? That's just a habit, right? I mean, we should feel pretty confident that we can get some good quality water, uh, even if you have to buy it, right? It's just not going to be that expensive. So, you know, drinking water shouldn't be a challenge, except for just the habit. So then we get to the habit. Okay, when, how, you know, how do I just drink enough water? And, uh, and the how uh, is, is pretty simple. You drink water first thing in the morning, and you're going to really replenish. Overnight, the body de detoxifies and you, your, your brain and your cardiovascular system, the muscles, uh, including the muscle of your heart, uh, the muscles in the veins, the connective tissue is all dehydrated. Well, connective tissue that's dehydrated gets, you know, contracts and gets stiff. Well, you don't want stiff, contra uh, contracted connective tissue, especially when it comes to the, the structures of your heart and the structures of your vessels, okay? You want those pliable and bendable. And so the actual tissue itself, if you don't stay hydrated, starts to get stiff and, and, and not very workable. So staying hydrated is really critical. Now, first thing in the morning, you drink your water before your food. If you eat food first, if you drink your juice, if you have coffee, anything that the, uh, the body registers as food is going to distract the water away from going into your tissues and have it pull into the digestive system. The digestive system says, hey, we've got food here. We need that water to help digest and absorb, and that makes sense. So uh, we don't want to engage the digestive system with our morning water or, be, or before our morning water. So it makes a huge difference. Uh, and I like to drink about 20 ounces before I eat anything. Sometimes I will delay eating uh, breakfast. I'll, I'll, I'll skip to, to the mid-morning. Uh, just so that I can get more water. I really, if I feel particularly dehydrated, uh, I'm like, man, I really need to hit water. Water is more important than food right now, and I will skip the uh, skip breakfast essentially to get into the, uh, the the make sure I get enough hydration. Now, that's the that's the easy part. That's the how. Okay, uh, but we need to be motivated enough to do that. And but you know, if if how. <laughs> Let's talk about hydration from the standpoint of just how you feel, right? Headaches, most headaches are from dehydration. You don't have enough water. And so at pain levels, inflammation levels in your body in general, if your bones and joints don't feel good and they're not moving, uh, you know, if your brain fog, right, you just don't feel like your brain is where it should be, um, you, all of those are dehydration. If you just drink enough water, you would really find out that that most of the things that people people most of the things that people are taking medications for over the counter medications just kind of these things you know their painkillers their antihistamines their anti-inflammatories and all the rest of it most of those would improve those conditions would improve drinking water okay and then if you do a little breathing and you, wow we can we can throw some some uh, throw that up a notch again and these things are you know for the most part totally free you don't have to have a supplement you don't have to do anything you just need to need to drink the water now in the context of the cardiovascular system i've already hinted that if your tissues of the tissues of the cardiovascular system get dehydrated they're going to follow the same path that any other tissue that gets gets dehydrated gets stiff right and and uh, the the vessels the arteries and veins, they're supposed to flex, right? When the blood pumps, the heart pumps, it pushes the, the fluid through, and those are supposed to flex. And that's what maintains a certain amount of blood pressure. When those get stiff, your blood pressure goes up because the what that flex is supposed to, to release a little bit of the back pressure that comes back to hit the heart. Well, if that doesn't flex, if it's a rigid wall, then when the blood, when the heart pumps, it, the 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 back pressure is going to put pressure on the heart, and the whole system is under more pressure. Uh, and so there is one of the reasons why people have high blood pressure. So if I were looking at a blood pressure situation, I would be one of my first 
approaches to, you know, like, you know, your, your blood pressure starting to creep up, go on a major hydration program and make sure you're hydrated, okay? Get into the habit of drinking enough water and uh, and really feel what that's like. Forget the 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 rest of it. Forget trying to supplement or or do all the rest of it. Just drink enough water. If you're not doing that and you're trying to take supplements and you're trying to cleanse and you're trying to do all that stuff, you're not going to have the basic fundamental resources. Water is a fundamental cleanser. It is your primary cleanser. And it washes out the system. It's the thing that keeps your tissues pliable, okay? And so in the, in the cardiovascular system, in the vessel system, pliability, a little, little bit of bendability is critical. Now, we don't want to get too loose, and that's, that comes when our connective tissue gets weak, right? That would be after we have a lifelong of, of, of dehydration where we, uh, or if we, a long-term steroid use is the big, big, big problem uh, with loosening or weakening the connective tissue, and then you end up, uh, you know, with veins, the, venal, the, the integrity of the walls of the veins start blowing out. We'll talk more about that connective tissue part. But the uh, keeping the, the, the tissue pliable, right, that's a big, big factor. And when one, if you stay dehydrated, if tissue stays dehydrated for long enough, proteins that are, like I said, are supposed to slide, layers that are supposed to slide over start adhering, uh, and those things get stuck. And once they do very hard to get that loosened up. It, I think all processes can be reversed. You know, I'm, that's kind of just me. Um, I have worked with tissue that I would not have thought would be able to be hydrated by doing manipulation, so massage. So your self-massage is gonna be so important, uh, especially for those veins that you can affect by pressure, uh, you know, to really keep that pliability because every time you, every time you do a little bit of that massage and pliability stuff, then you're actually, you know, flexing and and uh, you know breaking up those adhesions that get those little micro adhesions that get in the tissue. Can you do that to the heart? And, well, you know, not really. You can't really. Obviously, you can massage the heart. That's the basis of you know CPR. But um, what I'm saying is, you know, when you're talking about those adhesions and stuff, you just want to get the hydration going. And that's where I would do the breathing. Okay. Breathe that water in, send it into the heart muscle itself, right? This is where, you know, you got to get a, a, a better idea of what's going on in your body. So I'm going to breathe hydration and the heart as a muscle, as, as an actual physical tissue, I want to make sure the heart tissue is healthy. So I'm going to breathe in. So I drink my water. I just did that so I don't have any here. Uh, drink my water and then I'm going to send that to my heart and then all the vessels and veins that run through my body and uh and and that that's part of this just using breath and what's going to happen hey wow i'm getting increased breathing which means i'm getting increased oxygen which means actually my blood starts flowing easier so let's talk a little bit about the second huge major benefit of being hydrated and that is the viscosity of your blood if you get dehydrated you don't have enough water then your blood is thick okay your blood gets thick and having thick basically stiff blood, right? It's the same concept, but here in the context of blood volume, we don't have enough uh, blood volume to push through. Well, that of course starts to stress out the kidneys. We can have you know other effects down the road, but the immediate effect is that our blood is thick and potentially sticky, right? When we, we have a lot of material in our blood, we have a lot of protein in our blood, and when protein gets dehydrated and gets too close together, guess what happens? It starts getting sticky. So now we get things sticking together in the bloodstream. Uh, what does that sound like? Yeah, that sounds like clots or, or you know, my, have you ever heard of TIAs, right? Uh, TIAs are transient or temporary uh, something. I don't remember what the word stands for. Anyway, it's, a, it's where a, a sort of a, a pseudo clot forms in one of the veins in the head and temporarily blocks circulation uh, through that area. And so it kind of acts as a little mini stroke uh, and then and then it, it somehow clears. Well, that's typically fat, but could be protein in the blood that's congealing and then and then you know it's not really strong enough to form a clot per se. It's not a it's not a, something that's being formed by the platelet aggregation, but it's the actual just thickening of the blood itself. Uh, and, and a little blob that that kind of you know makes its way, not a clot. Um, so it's it's you know it's it, it we, this is just part of what I'm saying. He's keeping the circulation going, and hydration is critical. 
critical. So we want to do the breathing not only for the structure of the cardiovascular system, breathe and soak the heart with that water, soak the muscle itself with that water that we're, do, do, we're drinking and the vessel walls, but we want to breathe that into the bloodstream and feel the flow, right? Feel the blood start to flow and move and pump and help the heart out. Being dehydrated is going to put more pressure on the heart because the blood is thicker than it should be. And that blood is trying to get through all the way down from these larger vessels all the way down, branch, 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 into these tiny minor, tiny itty bitty capillaries. There's no way the heart can push the fluid, that much fluid out to that kind of, of uh, um, th so there's other things that, that do trigger or, or stimulate the capillary flow microcirculation, and we'll talk more about that in a whole video. But we want to make sure that we stay hydrated, okay? So this is, I mean, that's the key. When you talk about headaches, it literally means your brain is not getting enough oxygen, not getting enough blood because your blood's too thick, your body's dehydrated. Now, you can get headaches for other reasons. I know we've got a whole bunch of gambit of, of different things we've talked about here, all connected to hydration, but in the cardiovascular system, putting, you know, we don't, we want to stay hydrated, keep that blood flowing, and we want to keep the tissue of the cardiovascular system hydrated to make it, to make sure it's pliable. Two critical elements, okay? So drink your water. People are going to ask, oh, what kind of water? Uh, is there special water? Should I be drinking the, the, uh, the, uh, put those drops in the water to make water wetter, uh, better hydration, all that. You know, you can explore a lot of those products. There are definitely technologies that are, uh, basically talking about structure water water does have structure and can and can be uh, affected so if you if you put a, a water in a microwave etc cetera, etc cetera, it's not the same it actually causes uh, a restructuring of the water um, so yes it does matter what kind of water but in the end if you're not drinking water uh, the one thing that I would tell you to do is not drink tap water right I would rather have destructured filtered water than uh, uh, than tap water with a bunch of chemicals in it. So um, we want to make sure that we're not poisoning ourselves. Remember our, our wellness strategy, stop poisoning ourselves. We want to get rid of the, the poisons and toxins, and there's plenty of those in tap water. Sorry to tell you that the municipal water supplies are not even testing for a lot of things like birth control pills and things like that. So we're getting exposed to things that they're not even testing for. They say we've got clean water. Well, did they actually test for the presence of birth control pills and hormones and things like that? No. So how do they know we've got clean water? In fact, a group did go around and test and found a shocking number of municipal water supplies that contain pharmaceutical drugs in them. Why? Because we pee those drugs out. The water, our, our wastewater goes to a waste reclamation process. They reclaim that water, put it back in the water supply. Reasonable, fine, you know, let's, let's re, you know, re, re, recycle the water. But they're not, there's no way they can get everything out. So you'd have to do reverse osmosis filtering or massive filtering of this water to get that stuff out. Can't do it at the cost. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to spend the money to do that. Well, you're going to have to spend the money individually then uh, because I filter everything. I, I want to drink filtered water. Okay, so uh, those are just some tips. We I have a lot of, we've discussed hydration all throughout the wellness program. So this is just one more part, one more reason for the cardiovascular system. Uh, one more reason to stay hydrated, okay? Drink your water, especially your morning water. How much water? Half your body weight in ounces. If I weigh 160 pounds, I'm going to drink 80 ounces of water. I usually drink at least that, but usually drink more of that. If you do not know, if you say, oh, I drink a lot of water, do the hydration challenge. Keep track of every ounce of actual water that you drink, and I'm gonna declare that the red drink counts as water. I know that that's breaking one of my rules. I always say only water counts as water. The red drink is so awesome at getting hydrated that you can count that as water. So if you're drinking one of your bottles of red drink, that's 25 ounces. But you need to drink three of those, right, to get through to your most people to get to your daily dose. Um, I mean, even four of those, right? Which I wouldn't necessarily want to drink four of my uh, red drinks. So uh, drink your water, 80 to 100 ounces. Keep track of it. Make a check mark. And if you're not, if you haven't really tracked it, then you don't know for sure. So please track it. Okay. Happy wellness. One day at a time. One drink at a time. One breath at a time. And we're making our body better. One action. One good action at a time.